This video brought to you by the Bose Headset 10. Welcome to HavWeb's continuing coverage of NBAA from Orlando, Florida. I'm Paul Bertarelli, and I'm sitting in the cockpit of one of the world's all-time great utility aircraft, the Twin Otter. I'm with uh, David Curtis of, of Viking. Uh, Viking has uh, recently, uh, it's actually been a couple of years, I guess, uh, purchased the type certificates of all the de Havilland aircraft, and you have just started a plan to uh, remanufacture the DHC-6 Twin Otter. Tell us a little bit about that, David. Well, we acquired um, the type certificates from Bombardier for the chipmunk right up to the Dash 7, um, and uh, knew in the back of our, our mind that there might be an opportunity with one of these aircraft to put them back into production. Did some market study work and determined that, uh, in short order, that the Twin Otter was going to be the aircraft that people wanted to see back into production. Now, we're sitting in uh, what is actually a refurbed uh, uh, 300 series yeah. Twin Otters, which is being used for tests and demonstration. Yeah. Uh, and, and I guess proof of concept. Uh, going forward, how will the new Twin Otters be different from the uh, latest versions which were produced, I think, in the late 60s? Yeah. There's um, somewhere around uh, 300 engineering changes to the aircraft from, you know, the very complex, like the avionics suite that you see behind us, to mundane, you know, where we've gone from a cast part to a machined component. Uh, the floorboards in the airplane are a composite honeycomb instead of aluminum. Uh, we've got composite doors. So there's, there's a whole list of things that have been changed to the aircraft, and uh, mostly to drive down the empty weight, but also improve the safety, the operational safety of the aircraft. Uh, from what I know about the Twin Otter, from having flown them a little bit, uh, de Havilland really got this design pretty close to right. Uh, it was uh, well suited for uh, utility operations in the Arctic uh, and also in the tropics. What will be the market for the uh, new airplane? Well, the market is the market, to, you know, as it's used today. I think there's a huge demand just for replacement aircraft. And the first uh, probably dozen customers are existing Twin Otter operators that believe in the airplane, have it, you know, know what it can do, and uh, that's so it's a replacement marketplace. Uh, we do have a number of new operators, but uh, you know, from governments to airlines to the U.S. Army is acquiring three for their Golden Knights uh, parachute team. So it's all you know what a Twin Otter does today, from the Arctic to Antarctica to the Maldives. That's where you'll see the new 400s go. And nothing really ever came along to replace the Twin Otter, did it? Otherwise, this project wouldn't be going forward. Yeah, and I think that um, I mean, as much as a Twin Otter. Uh, is uh, it's a niche airplane and it's as a niche market and you're not going to sell these aircraft in huge volumes and volume is what you need when you're talking about a clean sheet design you know you're talking several hundred million dollars to bring a brand new design to the market well we had a, a platform the Twin Otter excellent brand everybody knows it we can bring some modernization to it but we need to keep it true to what it was designed for and so there's a market and the development or relaunch costs are considerably lower than if you were to develop a new design. So it's just made a lot of sense. And let's talk briefly about the cockpit here. Uh, we have the Honeywell uh, EFA system in place here. Yeah, this is a Honeywell Apex, uh, used uh, recently introduced in the PC-12 um, NG. Um, we went this way because of the software certification, the reliability, the warranty, the fact that we're going from the cockpit of the original series uh, 300 Twin Otter probably had 30 vendors supplying all the parts and components. Today we've got five. Uh, how about the engines and systems? Uh, any changes or upgrades there? Yeah, we're going standard with the PT6A-34 engine, which is a current production PT6. It's 750 horsepower out of the box, and we're derating it to 620 to keep our high hot performance uh, there and, and get good maintenance on the engines, reliability. Uh, so overall, you've, you've taken some weight out of the airplane, so it's going to have a slightly higher payload, basically the same cruise and fuel burn? Yeah, yeah we'd like to say we're putting the airplane on a bit of a diet. Um, you know, we've eliminated the AC system. We don't need it anymore, so it's an all-DC airplane. All the doors, entry doors, emergency exits are all composites, latest carbon fiber technology. Uh, the avionics system has knocked a tremendous amount of weight off the airplane. Uh, so, you know, new flooring, honeycomb composites. So we're really working very hard to drive down the empty weight so that our customers have more useful load. Uh, when will serial number one be available for sale, and what will be the selling price? The uh, current base price for the airplane is uh, for about three million nine twenty-five, with a base apex system in it on wheels, with a nineteen-seat interior. 
Uh, the first production uh, fuselage has just entered into the final assembly area in our Calgary facility, and it'll be it'll be green and on its wheels under its own power by probably March, April of 09. And then it, because the customer is an EASA European customer, uh, we expect that by July, August, they'll actually have an in-service date. Okay. Well, thanks very much for speaking with us, David. My pleasure, Paul. We've been speaking with David Curtis of Viking. Uh, this is Paul Bertarelli reporting from NBAA in Orlando, Florida. Thanks for watching.